Hey guys, what's going on? It's Shatterpoint back with another video, and in this one, I'm going to be talking about Batman Arkham Knight. In my opinion, Batman Arkham Knight was a very solid game with phenomenal gameplay and a good story. But when it comes to the story of the game, I feel that there were a lot of missed opportunities and things they could have done differently. So in this one, I wanted to talk about how I would keep Batman Arkham Knight in the canon, but also have a game put in place of it. There was a rumor a while back that all of the events in Batman Arkham Knight were a result of Crane's fear toxin and that none of it ever happened. Though this theory is confirmed not to be canon, it's still an interesting idea. So if I were in charge of whoever buys WB games, whether it be Microsoft or another studio, I would make this theory canon and then go tell Scott Snyder to work with Rocksteady for one game so that they could make a follow-up to Arkham Knight. I would have the title be Batman Remnants of Arkham or something like that. I would have Scarecrow stay as the main villain because he was an interesting one. And he was heavily teased in Arkham City to be the returning villain for Arkham Knight, and that's what fans wanted as well. And even though it's kinda hard to figure out, I really do like Scarecrow's motivation in Arkham Knight. He wants revenge on Batman for letting Killer Croc eat his face in Arkham Asylum. And he knows that one of the best ways to get back at Batman is to destroy the lives of the civilians in the city that he loves and protects. And Scarecrow has OCD when it comes to fear, so what better way to destroy the lives of the innocent civilians in Gotham City than using fear toxin? So I would leave Scarecrow as he is because I think he's fine. And I would get rid of the Arkham Knight completely. I would have the villain working with Scarecrow be Hush or Harley Quinn or somebody. Hush's introduction in Arkham City was so good. And then when Hush left in Arkham City and he left Batman locked behind a gate and then Batman radioed to Barbara Gordon saying close the file on the identity thief and open a new one on Thomas Elliot. And there's too much going on in Arkham City right now so I'll deal with him another day. And that scene was done so well because you know how big of a character Hush is and how big of a threat he is. So when he said, I'm going to deal with him another day, you had to be thinking that he's going to have a huge role in the next game, and he's going to be a very important character going forward. But instead of using him to his full potential in Batman Arkham Knight, he was just reduced to a very small side mission. His big plot and scheme was to blow up Wayne Tower and shoot Lucius. He's a character that can do so much more than that, and he was very underused. And if you wanted to use Harley Quinn as working with Scarecrow, you could have Scarecrow tell Harley Quinn to cause a distraction using all of the villains of Gotham coming together. And Harley Quinn, now more angry and distraught and not having the Joker holding her back, would be able to pull this off while Scarecrow is off plotting on how to gas the entire city. And so there are so many other ways that you could use these characters, these are just a few ideas. And there are countless other characters that you could use as well. For example, if you really want to mess with Batman on a psychological level, you can bring in the dealer from the Dick Grayson books. Like, you could have the dealer come at Batman with all of these items that represent his failures in Batman's past. Like, the dealer could have the crowbar that killed Jason Todd, or the gun that paralyzed Barbara Gordon, or the gun that killed Bruce's parents, and so many other items. These items could cause Batman to spin out of control psychologically and break down. And also, I would get rid of the whole Joker blood thing that was going on in Arkham Knight. That whole plot in the story was a cool Batman Beyond Return of the Joker type idea, but it ultimately didn't work in the world that Batman Arkham City set up. We saw what the Joker blood did to Batman in Arkham City. Batman was spitting up blood and he was turning pale and he almost died several times. So all of the people in the movie studios affected by Joker's blood, they shouldn't have been turning into Joker, they should all realistically be dead. And the whole Batman turning into Joker thing shouldn't have happened either. Batman drank the cure in Arkham City, he was fine, he shouldn't be having Joker hallucinations. And for the side missions of the game, I would have had more villains, I would have had longer story arcs for each side mission, and they wouldn't be repetitive. I would also take all of the stuff that you did with the tank in Arkham Knight and I would reduce it by like 80%. Overall, Arkham Knight was a good game, it was entertaining, but I feel like with a few differences it could have been a great game. The setup in Arkham City left the door open for so many opportunities that would have been a lot better for Arkham Knight. 
But with that, I'm going to bring this video to an end. If you enjoyed, please leave a like, share, and subscribe. And when you do subscribe, make sure you hit the bell so you get notified whenever I do drop a video. And I will see you guys in the next one.